Hello and welcome to another video from My Random Hobbies and today we're going to be talking about the sort of pros and cons of lorry driving or rather the sort of rough with the smooth. You know, there are different aspects of the job uh, as there is in any job and so we're going to explore that a little bit more today. Let's get into it. So as you'll know, if you've been watching any of my other videos, I have been learning how to become a HGV driver and indeed qualifying um, and have started doing the job. Now, one of the reasons I decided to get into this um, was, was because I needed that sort of change in my life. Um, so, and, and I've talked about the sort of reasons why in previous videos but there are some great great aspects to any job um, and also any job comes with its sort of downsides or its negative points and that, that's no different with lorry driving truck driving hgb driving whatever you want to term it um what i love so far about it and again people will say oh the shine will come off you know eventually etc but what I love about it uh, so far is that sort of notion that when you're on the road, you are A, in charge, I suppose, but B, no one's there hassling you. No one's there chasing you. Yes, of course, the operations team are wanting updates when you can, but whilst you're actually driving, that that's it. You, you, you're there, you're on your own. You're concentrating, obviously, on, on what's going on around you. Um, but, you know, certainly on motorways and dual carriageways when you're going particularly long distances you have that sort of time to perhaps listen to a bit of the radio perhaps think about uh, other other aspects of your, of your life as well and, and plan things in your head etc and if you like your own company then that, that's a good thing if, if you're one of these people that thrives on uh, needing to talk to someone all the time then, then perhaps that's not a good thing for you um but for, for but for me uh, as i've explained again pre in previous videos i actually quite enjoy my own company and being on my own sometimes and quite quite a lot of the time um i do find it difficult to uh, socialize sometimes which you know people find odd when most of my career has been with people and teaching people it's, it's you know teaching children um holding course if you like in in assemblies with with hundreds of people in attendance but you know i like my own company so so that aspect is really good the other thing i enjoy is is you go to all these different places all these different warehouses and, and distribution centers um and yards and you see how things work and operate um it is fascinating to me, you know, that that it's a part of your life that you don't really fully appreciate. That when you go to the supermarket, products are there. Um, you you don't grasp the steps and the stages really that have gone into getting it there, and also the the sort of sheer coordination needed to get all those things in the right place at the right time. It is quite staggering. Um, so I really, really enjoy that aspect as well. And I think on a, on one of my earlier videos, I'd been on a ride along and, and we pulled into this one warehouse and there were literally eight, nine forklift trucks swarming around, picking things out of our trailer and putting them elsewhere, you know, ready to go off to different locations. It, it is an incredible, um, procedure really. So that, that impresses me. Um, the the sort of camaraderie i suppose the, that you have with other drivers that there, there is a bond if you like that you, you all are sharing because you're all doing a similar job now admittedly as with any job you're always going to find that person who's being a bit grumpy or not willing to help or whatever but actually i've found that most people are prepared to help um, I'll give you an example that yesterday, yesterday, gosh, yes, only yesterday, 
I went and took a double-decker trailer back to a yard in Bradford. It was a short run, half an hour or so, um, but the, the basically the night driver hadn't been able to put the trailer in, in a yard because they had been locked up and weren't able to get access to the yard. So he brought it back to us and then I took it back later. When I got there, um, there was a gentleman there, Shunter, so that's someone who moves trailers around for a company. Um, he said, no, you can't park it here, but you can park it in the top um, sort of car park. And when I get there, I have to ring and get a, an access code. Anyway, by the time I had sort of turned round, which he allowed me to do in the other yard, he'd already had a chat to someone else and they were going to open the gate for me. So that was great. And then when I got in, there was only one space for blind reversing and then one I'd actually not seen at the very very back of the yard which was a straight reverse the guy pointed that out to me because he you know he understood and accepted that I was relatively new um, and he helped sort of just make sure I was guided into this space I didn't he didn't actually really need to do anything um, thankfully but he was there he was prepared to help and and I really really like that now, it all sounds fabulous and wonderful, etc. There are difficulties or there are hardships sometimes on shifts um, and frustrations while you're driving. Uh, and those are parts that, again, you don't really understand or appreciate until you're doing the job. The same with any job. You don't understand the sort of difficulties until you do the job. So one such uh, sort of frustration, if you like, and you may have heard about, you know, you might have heard this or as a car driver, you may have experienced this yourself. Um, is people going so slow on dual carriageways and motorways. It's frankly dangerous in, in my opinion. But when you've got a HGV vehicle restricted to 56 miles an hour on a 70 uh, road, um, having to slow down maneuver out of someone's way because they have either moved in and then slowed down or they've uh, they've just been going slow i mean you know someone the other day barely over 40 miles an hour 45 maybe at a push on a motorway and 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 that that isn't safe in my opinion um so that can be frustrating that's one of those so those little frustrations and i did mention there people cutting in in front of you and things um you know you're in a massive vehicle that doesn't stop quickly like a car can um because you've got the weight of the trailer and the goods in that trailer and when you stop you can stop the truck but the stuff in the back is keeping pushing you forward um, and so you've got to sort of stop at a, in a in a more gradual way, if you like. Um, so so it's tricky. Um, other frustrations can be waiting. Again, you don't really fully appreciate it. And and again, I'm not finding the waiting a problem really, uh, because I'm getting paid. I, I get paid by the shift as opposed to by the hour. Um, and if I have to sit and wait for, for a load to be loaded for an hour, two hours, sometimes three hours or unloaded, it's not the end of the world. It's frustrating at times because you might think, oh, great, I'm on a good time here. Oh, I've got a three hour wait. I could have been home a couple of hours ago, that sort of, you know, scenario. But actually, if you don't think of it like that, if you think of it as, um, this is my shift. It might take 10 hours, it might take 15. Then that, that's, that's, that's how I try to look at it. But it can be frustrating um, when, you know, when, when there's a pressure on you to complete a job in a given time. And perhaps someone's ringing you up going, where is this, where's that? Um, because they maybe need it for the next step of that logistical chain um, to, to get things into the right places or onto the right trucks for the next uh, driver to take so so that can be a little bit frustrating and I think the other thing um, that people don't fully explain um, you might have it mentioned to you but 
when you get to some of these places, every single place has their own procedure of how you have to do things. Um, it might be that you have to park up somewhere first, go to an office, tell them you're there, get a bay number. It might be that uh, those places aren't marked. And so you end up in the wrong place and you've got to somehow maneuver to get back to the right place uh, and so on. So you're not causing a problem for other people. Um, some places expect you to hand keys in, others don't. Some people, <laughs> I went to one, you weren't to hand your key in, but after speaking to another driver, you had to put your key on the side of the bay where you were so that the people loading and unloading could see that there was a key there. Um, but again, you, you you don't necessarily get told all of these things so that can be a little bit frustrating at times but again more more small frustrations than anything else i think one of the biggest things with a, any driver is coming across the unexpected or unknown and being told just to get on with it and and unfortunately i was as as operations on one particular day and booking a job, I was the cause, in essence, of a driver's frustration and, and upset and anger and, and all the rest of it. And, and, and I get it completely. The run um, I'd booked actually turned out that it, realistically it needed um, longer. Longer than the driver had in terms of driving hours or working time directive. And, and I'd done my maths wrong. Um, so from an operation side of things, that, that, that was my error. And I, and I have apologized to the driver and admitted that, that to, to him because it's only right that you do so. But that, that, that ultimately meant that he spent a night in the truck that he wasn't expecting to. Um, and you know, and then the next day didn't go as planned either, uh, because the places that he was dropping off at and delivering to took so long and there was a puncture that you know all these little things they add up to to make a big frustration well i think what the the good thing is that once that frustration is gone and it, it's happened it, it's done you move on to the next shift and hope hope that the next shift it, it runs smoothly um which often they do but not always so it's that unexpected element of driving and then again that's what you don't really fully grasp until until you're doing it you know um again i went to a, a pickup the other day i was told it was an eight o'clock pickup um when i got there i was told we haven't got everything we need so it's going to be nine o'clock before you get loaded it was closer to 10 before before i actually set off so you know and because of that you end up then getting the ops team asking you questions. You end up getting the person receiving the goods asking questions about where you are, what's happening, etc. Um, but minor, in the grand scheme of things, they're minor frustrations. So it is still a fantastic um, change for me. Um, and again, I'm sure. As with all jobs, there's going to be days where you just go, what have I done? Um, but, you know, for now, it's it's great. It's that honeymoon period. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, and there's lots and lots to learn. And every time there's something else happens, you're learning more things uh, and getting into it, and getting into it and, and understanding the industry a little bit better. So anyway, I hope that was a, a useful insight, perhaps a little bit longer than I anticipated um, going on for, but please do comment. Uh, let me know your frustrations. Let me know what you like about uh, about life on the road um, or what you don't like. Um, and again, like, subscribe, share, uh, and I will see you again soon for another episode. Take care for now. Bye-bye.